He said he was. We had the bank board meeting over at EDC this afternoon. Is that Craig? Yeah. And I said, I'll see you tonight. He goes, yeah, I'll see you. And he was leaving at 5 on the bank board. Okay. Everybody ready? Good evening. Welcome to the April 20th, 2022 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. At this time, I request that everyone please turn off or mute all electronic devices. I would also ask everyone please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Applications for conditional use permit request and rezoning requests will be heard during tonight's meeting, and the Commission will vote on these applications and make a recommendation to the County Council. The applications will then be scheduled to be introduced before the County Council at the Monday, May 9th, 2022 County Council meeting. Public comment for conditional use permit requests will be taken during tonight's meeting, and at the Council meeting on Monday, May 9th, 2022. Public comment on conditional use permit applications will not be taken at any meeting of the County Council held thereafter. Applications for preliminary plats heard during tonight's meeting will also be voted on by the Planning and Zoning Commission during the meeting. The vote on preliminary plats is final. Only a recommendation for denial of a preliminary plat would be heard before the County Council at the Monday May 9th, 2022 meeting. The following documents are introduced as a matter of record for this evening's public hearing. And those documents are the Unified Development Ordinance of St. Charles County, including zoning maps, and the year 2030 master plan for St. Charles County, which includes the year 2030 future land use plan map. I see that we have a quorum. Is there a motion to open the meeting? Motion. motion. Second? Second. Um, motion is made and seconded. All in favor, sign aye. Aye. Okay. A little um, information as to how we uh, conduct the meeting. Uh, I will read into uh, the record the uh, the application. Okay. Okay, Arnie. I'm just going to try the lights to see if we can turn them on. Thank you. <laughs> I will read into the app into the record the uh, application. Um, then we will have a report from uh, the staff, and at that time, uh, members of the commission may ask uh, questions of the staff. Uh, then we will have the applicant to uh, come forward um, and present the application and answer any questions that the commission may have. Uh, and then after that, we will have uh, open the public hearing for that application. Uh, if you're going to come and speak during the public hearing, we please ask you to fill out one of these cards. They're right here at the corner of, of the table. Uh, this way we get your name and add your, your name uh, and address uh, uh, correct in our, in our minutes. Okay? Um, regarding the public hearing, I think most of these people are, most of you are here for one reason. Um, with the public hearing, um, we have a few rules, guidelines, <coughs> suggestions, okay? Uh, please, you, you, your comments will be limited to three minutes per person. If you don't speak three minutes, you can't give your remaining time to someone else, okay? Uh, if address your comments directly to the commission as a body, uh, not to anyone in the audience, okay? Um, there's a lot of people here. Uh, if it becomes repetitive, okay? So if we've had three people talk about property value, we understand we don't need a, a, a fourth, okay? Uh, our traffic or our uh, uh, retention, uh, water retention, et cetera, okay? Uh, if you have someone that's going to speak for a group, that's fine. Please identify yourself. I'm speaking for whatever that, that group may, may be. 
Um, I think that covers that. Okay. Once the public hearing is closed, uh, we will take uh, no other comments from the public. Okay. So once the public hearing is closed, I've closed it. Now you've thought of something else. I'm sorry. The hearing's closed. Uh, we can take no, any, no more comments. Okay. Uh, then we will ask the applicant to come back uh, to answer any uh, issues or concerns that came up uh, as part of the public hearing. Uh, and then the commission will uh, consider the application and uh, we, will, we will take a, a vote on that application. So that, that's briefly how this <coughs> meeting is, is conducted. So, so the, our first item on the agenda is a conditional use permit request. The location is uh, 291 Boone County Lane, or Country Lane rather. Application <coughs> number CUP 22-01. Property owners are Anthony Brinker and Tammy L. Brinker. Uh, the applicant is Tony's Processing. The current zoning is A Agricultural District. The conditional use request is custom butchering. The parcel <coughs> size is 23.23 acres. Location is approximately 3,220 feet from the intersection of Boone Country Lane and South Highway 94. This is located in Council District 2. Staff. <coughs> Can you hear me? You go. Good, good, thank you. Under federal law and regulations, uh, as you're probably aware, uh, there's a requirement for uh, meat inspections <coughs> for meat processing. There are a couple of exceptions to that. One is that, for instance, if you're uh, processing meat for yourself, for instance, if you're a farmer and you're slaughtering <coughs> animals on your own farm, there's no ins inspections required for that or if you hire someone to do that on your behalf for your own personal use or for uh, f uh, friends and family, non-paying guests, et cetera, you can do so as well. Now that is a, a category uh, that I'll call custom exempt butchering. It's a service that's provided by, uh, by people. It's a little different than, um, it's different than a, um, a butcherer or a uh, uh, meat market, I'll say, because uh, they don't buy or sell meat. They just custom butcher for someone. So the state actually has a permit they issued for meat processors who do custom butchering in Missouri, but St. Charles County doesn't have a land use category for that. So recently when uh, an applicant came forward to get permits for a, for a um, custom butchering operation, we weren't able to place that within our table of, uh, of land uses because the closest thing we had was meat packing plant and livestock yard, which is allowed in an I-2 industrial district with a, with a conditional use permit. That's a totally different uh, type of land use because of the scale and the nature. Um, in that case, you're talking about um, heavy manufacturing. Um, you're talking about um, uh, rail lines, uh, lots of um, effluent, and et cetera. Whereas here, you're talking about something that's a lot uh, closer to the farm. So um, just this year, the St. Charles County Council created within our zoning ordinance, uh, our table of, or we'll call it table of uses, a custom exempt butchering as a conditional use permit in the agricultural zoning district. And so the applicants have applied for, for that specifically. What they propose is that they would slaughter uh, or butcher up to, uh, well, approximately uh, 100 animals uh, annually. That could include livestock or it could include game that's brought in by someone who's you know, a deer or whatever. And they would uh, butcher it for the uh, person on a custom per order uh, basis, um, as opposed to just anyone who, who walks in the door. The, the specifics of this case is that they have an existing 23 acres and existing farm buildings and an existing pen. They're not proposing to expand any of that. They're proposing to just, just use their existing facilities. They've got one saw, as I understand it, and one, um, one other piece of equipment, one saw and one grinder, and that's what they're proposing. Um, the conditional use permit criteria, I won't recite them for you, but they're uh, in your staff memo. I would say, taking into consideration the, 
the, the, their specific proposal, the scale of the operation, and the fact that they're not proposing to expand any buildings or really use it very much different than a, a, a farm, um, that county staff recommends that the planning zoning, excuse me, planning zoning commission recommend approval with specific conditions, and they're very basic conditions such as maintaining their state license for the custom exempt um, um, meat processing, and also obtaining um, permit from St. Charles County for the construction operation and maintenance of an on-site sewage disposal permit. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Questions for staff? Are the uh, safety uh, inspections gonna be done by the state or by the state. county? Yes, by the state. Okay. Yeah, my understanding is they do, they re review the, the layout of the operation and they may or may not have inspectors come in periodically to look at sanitation. There are certain ten sanitation requirements, but so in other words, there are state inspections rather than federal inspections like with other meat processing plants. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, we'll ask the applicant to come forward. I will tell everyone that does come to speak, uh, since this is a, a meeting of record, then I have to uh, swear you in. So <coughs> please raise your right hand. You saw me swear our affirmative will tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth in these proceedings or in the pains and penalties of perjury. Yes, sir. Please state your name and address for the record. Tony Brinker, 291 Boone Country Lane, Defiance. Okay, go ahead, Tony. Um, I did bring uh, several people with me. I think I've got about eight farmers back there that uh, we do processing for, and I do have a family member who is land joining that can, uh, could also testify that there is, if there is any issues, I know they said about the smell, they're, they're land joining and they would, you know, vouch for that too. Any uh, questions for the applicant? Very good. Thank you, sir. Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, ma'am. That's okay. Uh, just to clarify, so I was reading through this and listening to what uh, uh, he was telling us, and just to clarify, would this then also be like, for example, um, let's say a family was to purchase a cow from a farmer, would they be able to bring that to you and have you custom butcher that for their family, or is it only for the farmers themselves? No, it is. It is for people that buy one from the farmer also. Okay. Yeah, I do not, uh, it does state in the, in the resolution that just got passed that uh, I cannot sell anything wholesale or retail. Sure. So. Right. Any other questions? No. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We will now open the public hearing for CUP 22-01. Anyone wishing to speak regarding this application? Anyone? Seeing no one, we will close the public hearing. Anyone have any additional questions for the applicant? Any questions for no. staff? Okay. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion to approve application number CUP-2201, which is to allow a conditional use permit uh, for custom butchering located at 291 Bunch Boone Country Lane. Is there a motion? Motion. motion. Second. Clear. He made the motion. Who was that down there? Mr. Shell made the second. Ms. Barr, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Bamer? Yes. Mr. Cornwell? Yes. Mr. Fromm? Yes. Mr. Hollander? Yes. Uh, Mr. Clary? Yes. Uh, Ms. Shell, uh, Mr. Shell? Yes. Uh, Mr. Jackson? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay. That application passes. Uh, anyone here regarding this application, you're, you're free to go, because uh, yeah. we're going to be here a while. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> you're welcome to stay. Thank you very much. <laughs> processing of government.
The next item on our agenda is application RZ22-06. Property owner is Thomas J. McMinnemy and Julie A. McMinnemy. The applicant is Charlestown Crossing LLC contract purchaser. The current zoning is A Agricultural District with Floodway Fringe Overlay District. Requested zoning is R1D Single Family Residential District, 10,000 square foot minimum lot size with Floodway Fringe Overlay District. And R1A Single Family Residential District, one acre minimum lot size with Floodway Fringe Overlay District. The 2030 master plan calls for a White's Branch Planning District agricultural and residential one dwelling, one dwelling per uh, gross acre. The parcel size is 59.9 acres. The location is on the west side of Dyer Road, approximately 750 feet uh, north of Riverdale Park Drive, adjacent to the city of St. Paul. This is located in Council District 1. Staff. Okay, um, <coughs> just to be clear, this is only a rezoning request, zoning map amendment request. This is not a request for subdivision plat approval, but I say that because it does involve uh, the idea of a concept plan for a, for a, um, for a preliminary plat. <coughs> so the request specifically is for two zoning districts on one parcel including around what I'll say the northern and, and western edges uh, would be R1A single family residential district which is one acre minimum lot size and then within what I'll call the interior and adjoining Riverdale subdivision R1D single family residential district minimum of 10,000 square foot lot sizes. Uh, just for reference the Riverdale subdivision next door to the south of this they have lots ranging from I'll say one-fifth an acre to one-half an acre in size, um, just to give you an idea. We're gonna, I'm going to talk about utilities some tonight, and the reason is for, for this reason. Uh, one, in the master plan, there's something called an urban service area, and that is, it, there's a blue line in the, the map, and it shows the boundaries of where it's projected the um, ultimate limits are of uh, urban services, basically sanitary sewer, specifically sanitary sewer, but also water. This project is just outside of that urban service area, but it's adjoining an urban service area. It's located right next to the city of St. Paul, but it's, it's in what's called the White's Plant Branch Planning District. The White's Branch Planning District in your master plan includes about 7,600 acres north of St. Paul, uh, west of Highway 79, south of the Quiver River. And the reason it's depicted as a special planning district is because it recognizes the fact that um, there, aren't, there are uh, limited streets or, uh, within that area that are, that's serving that White's Planch Branch Planning District. But just as importantly, there are no long-range plans at this point for traditional gravity-fed uh, sanitary sewers to serve a large area. So because of that, any consideration for more urban-style subdivisions or um, let's just say subdivisions of, of, um, with lots of less than three acres, um, that's going to take a special kind of sanitary sewer service that's traditionally been called MBR plants. And in this case, they propose to use an MBR plant next door. An MBR plant is essentially this, it's, I'll just characterize it as this big filtering system. In, instead of, um, it, it's a way of, um, of uh, separating out solids and, and sanitizing the water, and it's a different way of, um, of dealing with sanitary sewers. This property that we're talking about has a, a, a uh, sanitary sewer service line extended to its property line in a manhole so that this, if this were developed, this property could tie into sanitary sewers very easily. But that sanitary sewer line goes down to next door Riverdale subdivision and this MBR plant. And this MBR plant is located in the common ground for Riverdale subdivision 
and it's inside of what looks like a barn structure. So that's, that's sewer service. Water service would need to be provided by the uh, city of St. Paul. So water service is typically for two things, one for drinking water, the other for fire flows, for firefighting, uh, for fire hydrants. Those need to be on like, I think it's eight inch lines or larger. We have in your packet a letter from the city of St. Paul stating that they would, uh, they would be willing to serve, uh, provide public water for a development at this location for up to 102 lots. So that's part of the consideration, I think. And again, the reason I'm mentioning the water and sewer when we're just talking about a rezoning is because uh, the rezoning couldn't be taken advantage of unless there's, there's uh, pu uh, public utilities that are available to serve it. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to, to mention it. Now, the, the White's Plant Branch Planning District <coughs> um, in the master plan states specifically is that the overall concept for the area is for agricultural, future agricultural land uses, except that for areas where urban services can be provided, um, the White's Branch Planning District contemplates residential uh, developments at a gross density of one dwelling per acre. This, is, this proposal is about 1.7 dwellings per acre. So it's above that vision <coughs> in the master plan. Um, but I would say that what's being proposed is um, certainly in keeping with the Riverdale subdivision uh, just to the south of it. So county staff uh, recommends that the Planning Zoning Commission uh, recommend that the county council approve the requested zoning map amendment and I see that the applicant and applicant's uh, um, team are here, so I want to let them speak about concept plan and any, any uh, information they might have in regard to that. Any questions for staff? Yeah, on the uh, MBR sewage plant, yeah. that's going to be, from what you're saying, that would be this proposed subdivision and two existing subdivisions. Who determines the capacity and how is that uh, analyzed in the overall recommendation? Well, it's um, operated by, let's see, Duckett Creek Sanitary District. I gotta make sure I have that correct. Yeah, Duckett Creek Sanitary District. So it's, it's really gonna be up to them. They need to provide, ultimately, before we could approve any sort of subdivision plat, we'd have to have a letter from them stating that, that they can like provide sanitary sewer service, yeah. Yeah, that seems like that'd be necessary. Yeah. Any other questions for staff? Hearing none, we'll ask the applicant to come forward. Good evening. My, oh, I'm sorry. Are you gonna, the council's coming also. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> no. Okay. I can okay. stand back. Yeah. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings or in the pains and penalties of perjury? Yes, sir. I do. Please state your names for the record. Thomas Hughes. 239 Fox Hill Road, St. Charles. Okay. I am Elizabeth Lum, 120 South Central Avenue, St. Louis, Missouri, 63105. Sweet 700. Yeah. I forgot that part. Thanks. Okay. So. Go ahead, yes. Ms. Hughes. Yeah, my name's Tom Hughes. I'm the owner of T.R. Hughes Homes, and I'm also the owner of Charlestown Crossing LLC, which is the applicant in this case. Um, uh, Beth is our attorney. If there was any legal questions anybody had to ask, um, actually, we were going to do a uh, pretty, uh, pretty good PowerPoint presentation on this. And when I read the uh, staff report, it was just going to reiterate everything that's in the in the report that, that staff has supplied you guys. So we decided not to do that. Um, I just wanted to give kind of a brief history to the board of um, of how we got here. And, um, and then make myself available for questions later or whatever. So okay, go ahead. Um, we back in 05, probably we developed, we were the developer, the, the original developer of Riverdale. Um, and over the years, the plan changed and homes were added, more ground and surrounding areas were purchased. Um, I think we went through three or four different revised plats that we went through the city of St. Paul. Um, 
as it stands right now, uh, Riverdale, um, when it's completely built out, will consist of uh, 676 homes. Um, it's one of the most popular and best-selling communities in all of St. Charles County. Um, and we probably are going to be sold out in about a year. We've sold lots to paying homes. Um, and, you know, there's two or three different types of housing uh, products and, and, and price in Riverdale. Uh, all the way in the enclave of Riverdale, you know, there's homes over $600,000 and then in, 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 in the other parts of Riverdale and the smaller lots, there's homes in the probably mid 200s to the $300,000 range. Um, so because we're just about going to be sold out soon, we, we were looking at other ground. We put this ground under contract several months ago with Tom and Julie McMenemy. Um, and you know, we've, this, this process has been going on for several months, actually. I mean, originally the plan was just to expand Riverdale and leave it in St. Paul and, and there's water and sewer available. Duckett Creek does have sewer capacity um, to, to take on another 250 homes, actually, over and above what's in, what's in Riverdale. Uh, they're in the process of, of developing that capacity now, but we're assured by Duckett Creek. Uh, and and, and our, our, this plan can't go through unless Duckett Creek can provide sanitary sewers to us. Um, so with that, we, we went to St. Paul, talked to St. Paul. Since the original Riverdale took place, St. Paul has changed their zoning to one acre per, per lot. Um, and that just didn't work for what we were trying to do so we we were going to leave it in in, uh, in the county uh, and again we've had we've had several discussions with st paul um, they have agreed to supply water we actually we it was our company that built the water tower uh, we we built the the mbr plant the the building at least for duckett creek way back in 05 or 2005 i guess and um and so, but the, but the vision really was, and again, they built the plant to, to service a thousand homes and the water tower was built to service 2000 homes or whatever. So at that time, the vision was there was going to be more homes built in that area and they were going to have sewer and water. Um, so if we, if we, if we developed it in the same manner that we developed Riverdale, there could have been 180 lots on this particular site. And again, there's there's 55 foot wide lots, 65, 75, 90 foot wide. There was just a variety of lots in the original Riverdale. And so when we decided to say in county, the the most the most lots we could get under county zoning would have been 160 lots, and that would have been with the 7,000 square foot zoning for for the lot. Um, and so we've had several meetings with Councilman Cronin. Um, I've met with some of the property owners uh, in, the, in the area and have listened to their concerns. And as a result, after developing several different plans, this is the plan that we decided to bring forward for approval. Um, you know, and again, around the, the western and northern boundaries on this plan, we have one acre lots to, to uh, join the other property owners. On the, on the side that backs up to the existing Riverdale, uh, those lots are, are basically the same size of the lots that they're backing up to. They're 90 feet wide and the square footage is varied, but, but actually the overall square footage is actually more than the existing lots over there. So <coughs> some are bigger, some are smaller. Um, and then the other lots to try to compromise and, and not do, not just do as many lots as we can. Um, we agreed to have the rest of the lots in there to at least the 10,000 square feet. And actually the average size of the rest of the lots in there are over 20,000 square feet. I mean, there's some 13,000, but then there's also some, some more. So, so anyway, we, and now we have, now we have 102. So we went from 180 to 160 now to 102. Um, and, and we feel like this is a very viable plan. I mean, anybody could drive through the enclave of Riverdale, uh, which is off of Omen Road, and uh, some beautiful homes, four car garages, 
three, four bedrooms. I mean, and, and again, those are probably in the five or six hundred thousand dollar range. That's probably that is what would be built here because the lots are wide enough and so on. So, and and the enclave sold faster than anything else in Riverdale, basically. So, like I said, we were going to do a PowerPoint, but but staff did a great job supplying you with as much or more information than I could have supplied you. Um, you know, with the uh, with water available and sewer available, that's why I don't think when the master plan was done it envisioned any of this ground to have access to sewer and water. So, uh, and, and actually we own some of the water taps. That was part when we sold the water tower to the city of, of St. Paul, part of the payment was that we would own some of the water taps. And, and so with this, we're hoping to be able to use some of the water taps that we own. Um, again, we try to do it in the, in the same manner or, or bigger and better than what's an existing Riverdale. Um, I'm available to answer any questions and, and, and we would ask for the board's recommendation to council to approve our plan. Okay. Questions for the applicant? In terms of uh, the traffic flow, it appears that everything will then pour, go out on Dyer Road, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Do you know of any plans of widening or improving Dyer coming up or anything I like that? I do not. Okay. Yeah. I'm a, a little confused as to the relationship of these two that was handed out. Yeah, one was one of those, and that, again, that's in your packet, really, from, from staff, but one of those is just showing Riverdale and the proposed ground that we're proposing to develop, and the second one is, so is the, is that's the one, that's Riverdale in the blue is the piece that we're proposing and tonight, that's going, and, that's what this and that is, is in the blue only this, what's this, what's the lot right? sizes <laughs> and showing the one acre lots and all. <laughs> This is what's being proposed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and actually, in your packet, staff did a better job than what we did there, showing where the one acre lots are at and yeah. on and on. And how many lots would be in your proposal? 102. Okay. And we've also, we've also agreed there was a concern that if this got approved that we would come in and change the plan and build smaller lots and small, you know, more homes and all that kind of stuff. And we've agreed to put a deed restriction uh, on the property that would be recorded that, you know, these are the lot sizes, the plan is not going to change. You know, we haven't done the, the engineering of the plan yet. So it could change somewhat when, if we have to have detention, stormwater detention and different other things, but, but um, we've agreed to say this is it. We're not going to pull any fast one on anybody at the end of the day and try to get more lots than what we've already got. So, so if you did have to have stormwater detention, would you decrease the size of some of these lots or would you lose some lots? Uh, we, we would lose lots. <clears throat> okay. Any uh, other questions for the applicant? Good to go. Thank, thank yes, you, sir. sir. Thank you. Uh, we will now open the public hearing for application RZ22-06. Uh, I, I will, before people, we start the public hearing, uh, this, all that we're considering at this point is the rezoning request, okay? Uh, issues like uh, stormwater runoff or retention, et cetera, and those types of things uh, would be considered when the, a, uh, a plat is presented. Okay. This, what we've been given is basically what we refer to as a concept plan. Okay. So, so this is not being a, a approved. The only thing that we're considering this evening is to the rezoning of the property okay. as to uh, the, the, the number of lots, size of lots, uh, that, and uh, entrance and exits and those types of things, uh, street width, 
uh, like I said, runoff, all that would be considered uh, if uh, this is approved and a plat is presented before this uh, before this body, so so those kind of issues were were, were not being con were considered tonight. So, okay, so we'll open a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak regarding RZ twenty two dash oh six can come forward. Somebody. <laughs> You solemnly swear or affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Please state your name for the record. Scott Dyer, 2950 Dyer Road, O'Fallon, Missouri. Okay. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah. How's everybody doing? Um, yeah, it's kind of like Yellowstone in here almost in a sense. Uh, we have a developer coming into a an area that's already been somewhat developed and wanting to infringe further into farmland which is my dad and myself and my mother that's here and my brothers uh, to the north um, in a sense um, I've had lots of conversations um, with numerous people myself and I also own a real estate company in St. Paul uh, called Mo Realty so I understand all this and I can't sit up here and be a hypocrite on pro development or not pro development um, so I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and, and do all that, but, um, in a sense, this isn't a movie either. So, and I don't think anybody behind me is a, a bad person on either side of this fence or in this room for that matter. Um, at the end of the day, everybody's trying to sell a piece of property and also make a living. And also the people that are here are trying to keep the property in a, in a certain manner, in a way, um, hence to this zoning request uh you know there's a there's a fine line here in this community and it's it's a tough it's a tough situation for me to be up here standing uh and talking to every, on on behalf i wouldn't say on behalf of anybody i'm up here talking for myself and honestly my dad and my mom and my brother um but i i understand everybody's situation here and i i think there's a lot of unknowns on both sides and the plan and to get it rezoned i mean i don't i don't necessarily have a complete answer if i if i want it rezoned one way or the other honestly and I, i've been fighting myself over it because of where my heart's at um is the plan tolerable on this 60 i, I think it's tolerable um is it something that i want no it's not something that i want um the part that's left out in my opinion is what the future is going to look like it's not just going to stop with 102 uh, and that's my and, and whether it be him or somebody else it, it, it will continue so whatever you guys decide tonight on the zoning is going to reflect what's going to happen in the future uh, and in a sense it, it comes off off this because uh, this isn't in the city of st paul we're in st charles county right now so i just ask that you guys really think about this and really think about it um, in a sense of you know what what you guys want to do um and i think that that's really all, all, all i have uh just take consideration of the whole picture okay any questions uh for mr dyer no. hearing none thank you sir thanks anyone else wishing to speak do you saw me swear <coughs> Or affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. I will. Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, Neil McNeil, 3300 Dyer Road, O'Fallon. Go ahead. I've written mine down because I'm kind of a talker, so if I'm going to stay under three minutes, I have to do that. Uh, <laughs> you can see we've got a fair number of folks here who have uh, who've shown up for this, so I think this does indicate the will of the residents around this 60-acre par parcel of quite a bit of concern uh, about how this development is proceeding partly because the history of development on Dyer Road has been filled with a lot of partial truths and partial promises, and this current plan seems to continue on that approach. The developers already discussed proposals for two other adjoining properties that will certainly be piggybacked on what this board approves at, uh, out of this request. St. Paul has admittedly made some questionable development uh, discussions in the early 2000s. 
Uh, Mr. Hughes mentioned in 2005 the beginning of, of Riverdale, and then when the 2006 and 7 uh, 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 e economic collapse happened, there had to be adjustments made. Uh, this plan uh, 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 is, is built along some of those same questionable development decisions in the early 2000s, and it just kind of compounds those blunders at the county level instead of just the city of St. Paul level. There's a reason St. Paul wouldn't expand to allow this parcel to be put into the St. Paul city limits. Why should an already stressed infrastructure be burdened with homes on less than three acres as the 2030 master plan provides? This pro proposal even violates the <coughs> exception in the plan for one acre lots which might be able to be accommodated if some of the surrounding infrastructure was improved. But infrastructure is more than just sewer and water. Has St. Louis County shown any planning to improve roads and bridges in the area? We've already seen several serious accidents around the increased traffic and lack of signage, lack of shoulders, lack of police patrol activity involving the increased Riverdale traffic. There has been a lot of increased traffic on, on Dyer. With the very visible exception of a four-story swamp building at 70 and Dalbo that we all laugh about, Every resident I'm aware of in this area has diligently played by the existing rules, whether they're building a home or a garage or even a hay shed. Why does this development get to violate those rules that others agreed to live under? The St. Paul area development problems of the early 2000s came to a head as the economy declined from, a wi from the Wild West boom of building in 2006 and 7. Folks, right now, everybody in this room realizes we have bigger economic clouds on the horizon today. Why approve a development that is only financially viable with tiny lots and small houses when, that is being planned during a red hot, robust housing market when we're already seeing housing starts decline, interest rates are rising, rampant inflation that is gonna bring a slowdown in the economy? Won't we be right back here in a couple of years with a modified development plan that asks for smaller lots or smaller houses? I, I, I appreciate, you know, Mr. Hughes uh, 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 mentioned that, that they would codify something, but those sort of things have been said in the past. When, it, when push came to shove, modifications were made. I would just ask that you don't have your names associated with another roller coaster ride on a poorly thought out plan. Uh, those that, of us that don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Anyone else wishing to speak in this public hearing? You solemnly swear or affirm that you'll tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings or in the pains and penalties of perjury? Yes, I do. State your name and address for the record. Thank you very much, members of the Planning and Zoning Commission. My name is Arnie C. A.C. Dinoff, County Public Advocate. Um, first of all, I've looked at this from various angles, um, and I want to make a few things uh, on the public record. We put a lot of time and effort, and some of you on the commission served on the subcommittees or the um, the comprehensive long-term study that was done. There was a lot of money and a lot of hours were spent on that. And that land use plan speaks for development in this area for responsible growth. And right now as it stands, I see some responsible growth. There's been a precedent of zoning in the Riverdale neighborhood that's been set by the city of St. Paul. There is a housing shortage, not only in St. Charles County, not only in our region, but across the country. As we all know, real estate values and property values have skyrocketed. If you just look at your assessment that you received in May of last year, it went up about on an average of 17 to 25% in most cases. There's a demand in the current St. Louis regional housing market. No, I'm not paid by any special interest or no, I'm not a lobbyist, uh, but there is a demand for smaller lots and that's what the market is seeking. Now, the sanitary district has come up and I really have a problem with that because we haven't, again, reached out to our partners in terms of the executive director of the, of the Ducket Creek Sanitary District. However, I'd like to make a matter of public record that Councilman Joe Cronin, in an email dated on Tuesday, April 19, 2022, to Councilman Terry Hollander to my right and to the Director of uh, Planning and Zoning, Mr. Meyer, he states that he worked with Mr. Uh, Hughes 20 years ago 
and reached out to Duckett Creek and put together the wastewater and the city service of water for the city of St. Paul. Now he says that he doesn't want to get involved and he's trying to stay out of it and he won't be called upon unless he's asked to. If these residents have some uh, dealings or some feelings, that is your county council elected representative. And I also would encourage the residents behind me to check the Missouri Ethics Commission to see if the developer has donated to his campaign in the past or currently. Now, as you all know, I'm a big proponent that we need to have partners such as the Fire Protection District, the water, which you do have a letter on file from the city of St. Paul, the sanitary district, and other partners such as the school district. I see no letters from the Fort Zumwalt School District. The elementary school on Highway P is to the max capacity right now. If this goes in, in the next five years, there's a possibility of trailers at the elementary school that's located on Highway P. The O'Fallon Fire Protection District, I don't see that we've reached out to them in terms of response and in terms of serviceability. Now to the residents behind me, I wanna make a matter of public record that this coming Tuesday, April 26th at 3 p.m., the five trustees of the Board of Trustees of the Ducker Creek Sanitary District will be meeting. The first item on the agenda is public comment, and I would encourage every resident who has any problems or any solutions to this item that you come and let your voice be heard and make it a matter of public record. This is a public meeting. These are public officials and the, their offices are located on Missouri Highway K uh, just before, just north of O'Fallon Road and that's 63368. And the last thing that I wanna say is I believe that this is a good fit as it's currently proposed in terms of the zoning. These lots could be more denser under our current uh, code. And if they annex to the city of St. Paul, which I heard the former, the past gentleman testify, <coughs> that you can't build uh, smaller lots in the city of St. Paul, but I beg to differ because of the Riverdale lots currently in place. But that zoning will be the same as Riverdale if they do annex to the city of St. Paul. So this is a win-win for St. Charles County. Uh, I think it will increase the property values of the entire neighborhood. Uh, this is the type of product that new residents that are moving to our county want. They want a rural setting living with rural uh, uh, services and the uh, aspect of having open spaces. Uh, we have new county parks that are going online in this region and it's an up and coming region. Our comprehensive plan calls for this type of development. I would encourage all the planning and zoning commissioners to vote yes on this application. If there's any questions, I'll be more than happy to entertain them. Any questions for Mr. Denoff? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak regarding application RZ22-06? Anyone else? Once the public hearing is closed, no further opportunity to speak regarding this application. Oh. I'll call him back up. Okay, the public hearing for RZ22-06 uh, is now closed. We'll ask the applicant to uh, come back. I remind you, you're both still sworn in, so go ahead. Okay. Uh, yes, sir, just to address a couple things that were mentioned, we do have a letter from the O'Fallon Fire District um, that says they have the capacity um to serve this development so we do have that letter i don't know if, if staff has that it's or not PowerPoint. yeah it was in the powerpoint so <laughs> i can i can supply that um and then as far as the schools it's just been my i've been doing this 30 years and the schools have been notified of this development and if a school district has a problem with it they're the first ones to come to a planning and zoning meeting or a council meeting to express their concern about capacity and the you know from from that standpoint so i think just by the fact that the school districts aren't here speaks to the to the the real likelihood that they don't have a concern for this development that's sure. your um if i could uh move over to the microphone absolutely if i could jump in uh, i heard a couple of concerned citizens talking about uh, kind of the nature of the development and uh, the restrictions that Mr. Hughes has uh, offered to place on the property as far as this particular project. 
um, and kind of wondering what this might be opening the door to as far as future development. Um, I think the answer to that, at least in my perspective, is driven by the MBR plant. Uh, that plant was constructed for the Riverdale development uh, to handle, I think, 900 and Close, yeah, 900 to 1,000. 900 to 1,000 homes. It is currently serving about 630. Um, so uh, I have been informed, or at least my understanding, is that um, Ducket Creek has already made some applications to DNR to plan the or to uh, work on the expansion of the MBR plant to accommodate an additional 250 homes, which would accommodate this development plus 100 more, and that's really it. Um, because there would be no more room in that plant, no more room for that kind of infrastructure. Uh, so I think that uh, kind of has a natural limitation to what kind of development can take place. Uh, the other issue, of course, is the size of the lots. And in this area, if you were to put in three acre plus lots, uh, the use of the MBR plant it, it couldn't be used. Uh, the, it would be cost prohibitive to extend the lines that far into each property. So what you would end up with is, you know, the cost of sewer exceeding, you know, what you would actually get for the house. Um, I did also hear some uh, concern with roads. I believe Highway 79 is under uh, MoDOT's jurisdiction. Dyer Road is under the St. Charles County Road Board. Uh, our experience, at least with those two entities, have been that once there is a demand, the improvements uh, are made. I think uh, you've done a fairly good job of doing that historically. I know if you look up in the Moscow Mills area, MoDOT has put in some overpasses, uh, roundabouts, things like that to help control the flow of traffic. Uh, so, you know, I think that, um, you know, the the capacity of the road or, or the use of the road would be kind of what would drive MoDOT to come in and take a look at that. Okay. Any questions for the applicants? Yeah, I, I have some. Mm -hmm. So you're saying you're not going to build until Ducka Creek is approved ad additional? Yeah. Yes, that's so correct. When, when do you expect that? Well, happen? they've they've made application, and again, uh, I've I've had several discussions with uh, Keith Orbuckle from Ducka Creek. Sure. And they are confident that they're going to be have the capacity for 250 more homes. Yeah, but I'm more worried about the time frame, time frame on it, Tom. Because if you, yeah, if you, if you it's, this, it's my understanding. It's two years. Well, it's my understanding they're in the process of, of, of expanding the facility right now. Have you heard anything on that, Robert? Did anybody hear? Anything? I've heard indirectly the same that the equipment may even be have been purchased. So it's a matter of getting a permit approved from the state of Missouri. I'm hearing that indirectly. Okay. Yeah, and the reason I'm saying that is because if it's five years down the road, we're not going to be on. Some of us won't be here. We won't remember, and you may come back with <coughs> the concept plan or the permit plan. Right. And that's what I think some residents are worried about. So how do we make sure that that doesn't happen? Sure. Well, that is uh, deed restrictions the goal of the restrictive covenants. And there will be restrictive covenants on uh, both the R1A and the R1D parcel. When will that um, happen, though? It's 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 we've already it's i, I believe a proposed so. restriction has been okay. submitted is that correct yeah and we under, yeah. we understand that this is a recommendation to council and then it has to be approved by mm -hmm. council and we you know and again we've had meetings several meetings with staff trying to address whatever concerns they had and you know we've just tried to accommodate and compromise to you know no, um, no i think our staff's done a great job with you guys and you guys have done fine it's just i'm i always concerned when we don't have you know, when there's not a preliminary plat right after this meeting because you get, don't have the Duncan Creek part done, what I'm talking about is residents behind you. They're, they're worried about, you know, five years down the road if something happened, and the economy can change, and all of a sudden you've got this problem. So mm -hmm. if you don't have those deed restrictions on there, they don't have, they don't have coverage is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You know, and the deed, the deed restrictions will be in place before the count, the council would approve. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. I, I think that, and again, I think uh, the MBR plant on its own has, uh, you know, some limitations on what can actually be built there. So. Mm -hmm. um, no, I understand you know, that. Why you're just, looking for the again, yeah. I'm thinking about the people behind me, not <laughs> just you guys. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The growth yeah, in this hold, area hold is up. limited by the number of. Yeah. We I'm sorry. Yeah. Another question. Yeah. Yes, so uh, we've got a, uh, an R1A and an R1D 
over the 59.66 acres. It's not defined which goes, how much is it? I mean, I can look at this plat, but this isn't even a real plat at this point. Yeah, we, we provided legal How many acres is the R1A and how many is the R1D? Yeah, I think all, all the lots that are shown as one acre would be the R1A. Mm -hmm. And those are the outside, basically. Yes, on the north the and the west, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is what. But this isn't a final plan. No. No, but the, but we're we're saying that this is the plan. Is this what you put in for the deed? Is, um, is this is this the mix that you put in for the deed, saying that of, of the land deed that this is what we intend to do is not this exact plat, but the outlay of the plat. We're going to have what roughly 16 acre, 16 one acre lots, and the rest will be between uh, roughly 10,000 and 25,000. Are you referring to the size and the number of lots that we're yeah. putting in the restrictions? Yes. And so that's what you've given to the county yes. already? Yeah. And Robert, you have that, and that's what it matches that? Yes. Um, so they've turned in a legal description for a, a very exacting legal description for the boundaries of the R1A zoning district and the R1D zoning district. Okay, that's what I want to know is if yeah. that area is defined. Yeah, it's very, it's defined by uh, a land surveyor and um, I just don't have in my head the exact acreage of those two areas. No, that's fine. I just want to know that it's defined. It's not defined on here. I just want to know yeah, that it's defined I'm sorry. by <laughs> some kind of uh, legal or boundary survey. Yeah, yeah, I likely have the legal descriptions with me. If you want them, I can yeah. provide copies. And it's defined based on the plan where it shows mm -hmm. the on anything that's right. one I, acre I is that, going to yeah. be the 1A zoning, and the rest of it would be the other zone. So while the preliminary plat hasn't been submitted the boundaries are defined by a legal and it would match up kind of with that yes. Yes. okay yeah. that's really what i'm trying to determine yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Your, your legal description so all the the hash mark that's mm -hmm. just one uh one zone. legal one legal for all that it's not broken down by lots no right. it's okay. just one meets and bounds because legal. this this may this mm -hmm. may change Right, and we can't refer to lot until the plot's yeah, recorded. No, that's why so, I just wanted to know, know it's, that, yeah, it's done area just, just, just two, you have two legal descriptions. Yes. Yeah. Right. Can we put so. a condition if we approve that if, if something changes um, with the land deed for some reason, whether it's mm -hmm. water restrictions or whatever the case may be, that they would have to come, you know, for their sake? Well... Like you said, they may have to, re may have to redo a few things if they have, you know, water, uh, drainage issues, those types of things. We'd consider that a flat. Yeah, that would be done at the time of the plan. That would be done at the plan. But you do bring up, all of you collectively are bringing up some really important points here. Uh, let me go back to, since we're at just the rezoning stage, uh, the county can't do what's called contract zoning technically. Correct. Meaning we can't say that, oh, you can, we'll rezone it, but you can only use it for a uh, convenience store and not a pawn shop or something like that. But in this situation, the applicants have volunteered to place a private covenant on the property, binding it in the future, so that, let's say, two years down the road, they're still working on plans, we go into a recession, things change and they sell the property that the next property owner will be bound by the same by by those uh, legal descriptions oh, i'm sorry those uh covenants, covenants that they are uh, placing upon the, the property so so we could make that a, a part of the we can't is no. what you're saying i think at the the county council level they would probably deal with the question of the uh, private covenants and how to deal with that with the ordinance because it's going to have to be crafted carefully so that it's not contract zoning but at the same time the outcome is predictable based on the representations of the applicants. Okay. Answer your question. Anyone else? Question for the app? Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will now bring RZ 22-06 back to the commission for consideration. Anyone have any questions for staff? Any uh, comments? Concerns? Well, I think that uh, the uh, the way it's being proposed, uh, highest and best use as 
the development is uh, transitioning there, that the lots that are adjoining the existing lots uh, seem like the natural progression, and it seems like putting the one acre around adjoining, since that's what the master plan calls for, seems like a nice transition and a, a reasonable <coughs> perspective. So I, would, I, I think that's a reasonable way to look at it. Okay. Anyone else? Hearing no one, the chair will entertain a motion uh, to approve application uh, RZ22-06. Motion. There's a motion by Mr. Hollander. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Mr. Cornwell made the second. Uh, Ms. Bamer, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Clary? Yes. Mr. Fromm? Yes. Uh, Mr. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Shell? Yes. Uh, Ms. Barr? Yes. Uh, Mr. Hollander? Yes. Mr. Cornwell? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay, that application passes. Okay. Remind them. Hey, Roger. Oh, uh, I will remind everyone that uh, uh, ours is just a recommendation to the county council. The county council, this will be on their agenda uh, at the May 9th uh, meeting, right back in this in this room. And that meeting, what time do you start? Seven o'clock. Seven, seven o'clock, uh, Monday, May 9th, right back in this room. And it'll be on the county council's agenda, and you um, may have an opportunity to uh, make a presentation uh, during the, your public comment, correct? Yes. Yeah. Terry? What's that? During the public comment portion. Yeah, they certainly can comment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and you, you're free to you're free to go. <laughs> I guess that was a uh, yeah. sort of a nice way of saying yeah. After the uh, awakening. Seems like several other builders. It's tacky. Just things happen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. I was surprised. Let me get. Uh, the next item on our agenda is a rezoning request located at 3866 South Point Prairie Road. Application number RZ22-05. The property owners are uh, Grapen Grappenthin Family Limited Partnership and uh, Keith Baker and Michelle Baker. The developer is Lombardo Homes of St. Louis, LLC. The current zoning is A Agricultural District, five acre minimum lot size. Requested zoning is RR, single family residential district, three acre minimum lot size. The 2030 master plan recommends re rural residential uses. The area is 96.27 acres. The location is approximately 500 feet west of Highway Z on the north side of South Point Prairie Road near the city of New Melly. And it's located in Council District 2. Staff. We've got two related items on the agenda tonight. One includes the rezoning and another uh, a proposed plat. So at this point, we're considering the zoning. And I, I won't reiterate uh, specific or exactly what's in the written staff report, but I would say that the um, 2030 future land use plan recommends rural residential land uses, less than one dwelling per acre. And the applicable zoning district in the master plan is recommended as RR zoning district. So county staff um, feels that the development is consistent with the future land use plan and with the existing development patterns. And we would recommend that this body recommend approval for the rezoning. Any questions for staff? Uh, utilities in the area? <clears throat> for uh, utilities, it's going to require uh, on-site sanitary sewer disposal and let's see water could be supplied I believe by public water supply district number two okay and um, the developers can tell us for, for to confirm that but I believe they'll have like uh, public water supply fire hydrants etc in the subdivision okay thank you 
Any other questions for staff? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll ask the applicant to come forward. You saw me swear or affirm that you'll tell the truth, the whole truth, or nothing but the, the truth in these proceedings are the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Please state your name for the, and address for the record. My name is Doug Tiemann. I'm an engineer with CEC, and my address is 3000 Little Hills Expressway, St. Charles, Missouri, and I am here representing Lombardo Homes, and with me is Doug Nance and Jeffrey Schreier from Lombardo Homes. Um, I have a quick PowerPoint presentation, which I will go through. Um, this is where the site is located, the yellow area. It's off of uh, South Point Prairie Road, uh, north of New Melly. This is a blow up of the area. Uh, that we're talking about rezoning. Uh, what it is, is as I said, uh, currently zoned A, agricultural. We're proposing RR. Uh, we are proposing that all the lots will meet a minimum of three acres. The total area of the track is 96. We're proposing 28 lots with an average lot size of, lot size of 3.15. We will have a 20-foot wide paved road that will be built to public standards, and we are proposing that that would be accepted by the county for a roadway. Uh, the water service is provided by Public Water District Number Two. They've provided us with a letter uh, that to serve the site. Water service is immediately on the south side of South Point Prairie Road, and we are also proposing that each lot would have an individual septic system. Um, as mentioned, master plan recommends rural residential. This is the plat and this is the layout that we're proposing on the property. Uh, we're proposing one street that's approximately 5,600 feet. Um, the reason for this arrangement and not looping around is to preserve the trees and also to not build in a ravine that runs down the back of the lots. We are actually establishing a, a buffer zone across that, and we have submitted this plan to the New Mallee Fire District, and they have gave us an approval on that. What we've done is we've constructed a number of eyebrows that you'll see on this plan that allow fire trucks to turn around and at the end of this road, we have a very large uh, cul-de-sac that will supply the needed turnaround to satisfy their requirements. Uh, all the minimum lots are going to be 150 feet at the building line. They have the setbacks that meet, meet the requirements of 50 front, 40 side, 50 rear. Um, also to explain what we're doing with the roadway. Um, we are limiting the disturbance and we're also limiting the amount of tree removal. Uh, there's approximately 10 acres of disturbance for this project uh, for the roadway and we're gonna keep 91% of the trees that are on the site uh, shall remain. And this is a detail. Uh, of the tree removal that we're proposing on. And this is the entrance. Um, there's an existing silo that's on the property and we propose to keep that silo and make it part of the entrance uh, to go into the property. Um, and we've demonstrated the turning radius is on that and uh, we would like to preserve that and, and keep that as a uh, entryway. And as mentioned, staff recommends that uh, we've met, uh, we've addressed all the comments that they presented at this time. And if anything comes up, we'd be happy to uh, address those. Any questions for the applicant? The uh, street stug, I think you said, were 20 feet wide? I believe it's 50 foot, 25 on each side, if I remember right. 
Okay, so those are, are public, going to be public streets? Oh, the private? streets, I'm sorry, okay. I'm sorry. The street's going to be 20 foot wide and it'll be paved either concrete six over four or asphalt seven and a half over six. And are those four. be public or they, yes. they will be public? Okay. And then what about water detention or retention on? on we do not. That'll be in the plan. Okay, well, we'll ask that question in yeah. five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> any, any other questions? <laughs> for the applicant. <laughs> Hearing none, thank you, sir. And I told you to be here. <laughs> we will now open the public hearing for application RZ22-05. This is for a rezoning request located at 3866 South Point Prairie Road. Anyone here wishing to speak regarding this application? You saw me swear or affirm that you'll tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Christopher Eaker. I live at the direct adjoining property to the proposed uh, Saxony Ridge, I think it's called. I know this is just the, the zoning request, but nonetheless, my question is not this, you know, it's for well, the well, man sir, that just spoke. Up here this sorry, way. I'm sorry. Uh, for the man that just spoke, my question is why do they need a rezoning request unless it is uh, cost prohibitive to stick with five acres? Is three acres that much better? Or do you have to adjust the character of New Melly to stuff as many homes in as you can? Uh, I guess I just wait for, my, for him to come back up and talk. Is that right? Um, <laughs> Anyone else wishing to speak regarding uh, application RZ 22-05. You saw me swear or affirm that you'll tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings or the pains and penalties of perjury. Yes, I do. Please state your name and address for the record. Thank you very much, members of the Planning and Zoning Commission. My name is Arnie C. A.C. Dinoff, County Public Advocate. Uh, just a couple things to make a matter of public record here. Uh, I was just going to make an inquiry to county staff to see if the city of New Melly was notified. As we all know, the Missouri Vice State Statutes offers a remonstrance that if uh, a rezoning is within one and a half miles of any municipality, that that board or board of trustees or the board of aldermen or city council have a right to pass a resolution for a remonstrance to be filed with the county registrar. And that's also in our home rule county charter uh, before the second reading of the bill. Uh, that would uh, trigger a super majority of the county council from four members to five out of the seven members. So that's my first inquiry is if we notified the city of New Melly. The second issue is I heard the applicant talk about approval from the, fire the New Melly Fire Protection District. But as we all know, fire hydrants are um, very hard to come by in this uh, fire protection district. He said he's gonna put the fire hydrants in, but I wanna make sure that our partners are on public record and I would like to make sure that that letter of approval is part of the public record before the county council meeting. I also don't see some of our other partners, such as the ever uh, growing and expanding Wentzville School District in terms of accommodations for additional students in this region. Um, I am in favor of this uh, application. This is a growth urban rural area. Uh, people desire three acre lots. Uh, our 2030 comprehensive plan land use, as I discussed in the last public testimony, uh, we put a lot of time, effort, and debate in that. And uh, this is a prime property for that comprehensive use plan. And I would encourage every member of the Planning and Zoning Commission for unanimous approval. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak regarding application RZ 22-05? I wasn't planning to speak. I guess oh, there was- Oh, ma'am. Oh. Please raise your right hand. 
Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings or the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Please state your name and address for the record. Rebecca Murphy, um, 1262 Hepperman Road, Winsville. Go ahead, Re Rebecca. <clears throat> I guess I don't agree with this, and the reason is I sound shaky because I wasn't planning, like I said. You have five acres. You all, their zoning is five acres. Why does it have to be changed to three acres? What is a good reason? You know, I was, was told that anything south of N, towards N and New Maui, to the goal was to keep five acres to help preserve the county, that area. So I think you have to have a pretty good reason other than more people coming in, which they can, there's a lot of places they can go, to change it from a five acre to a three acre. I just think it has to be a really good reason. And I'm done. Thank you. Thank listening. you, ma'am. Anyone else wishing to speak regarding application RZ 22-05? Anyone? We will now close the uh, public hearing for this application. Ask the applicant to come back. Any, regarding the rezoning, is there any questions for the applicant? Anyone? Hearing none? Think. Um, I would like to speak a little bit about uh, a couple items. Number one, on the fire protection, we did uh, send the plans to New Melly. They did ask us to add a hydrant and in one location, and we have added that hydrant on the plans. Um, to also address the acreage, uh, this acreage that we're proposing uh, is less than uh, what the acreage in the master plan is planned for the area. It is very consistent with the surrounding properties and the develops in, developments in New Melly that you're seeing right now. Um, and then also to address stormwater, we do not propose any stormwater detention on this project, uh, but we will look at that when we improve, do the improvement plans. Uh, we are talking about Lot sizes that are 3.15 acres. Okay. Well, anything else? Be happy okay. to answer. Any questions. other questions for the uh, applicant? Hearing none. Thank you, sir. <laughs> oh, let's see now what I do with my piece of paper. So we will bring uh, application RZ 22 05. Uh, rezoning request at 3866 South Point Prairie Road back to the Commission for consideration. Any questions for staff? Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, first of all, you know, having been on the County Council for quite a while now, uh, the this whole five acre versus three acre lot thing has come up numerous times. Uh, some how somewhere there used to be some some invisible line and I have no idea where it was. Uh, that was supposed to be okay, you know, if it's on this side of the line, it, it's got to be five acres, and we're going to really try to work and preserve that. And if it's a little bit closer to Wentzville, then we'll kind of try to see if we can go to, you know, go to the three acre lot. And as, as I said, I'm really, I'm really torn between this because, you know, we are in, in this particular area of the county, it is, uh, you know, very rural, very open, and, um, you know, I think there's a reason why they originally uh, had the five acre lots. And, and, and so it's, it's, it's very difficult for me to, to, uh, to put an, uh, an actual specific spot where that line exists because we've, we've, we've dealt with it on different projects over the years. But, uh, uh, you know, I think there's a reason why there's five acre lots there. The 2030 calls for one acre lots, right? Um, Less than one dwelling per acre. Uh, it recommends rural residential land uses, and if um, if you could put up my screen, that would I could show you on the map here. Let's 
see if the AV people in the back can put up my screen, if that's possible. Okay. What I'm looking at is the, the 2030 <laughs> master plan. Okay. They come out. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Look at it. That's where we have the unit. High tech. Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, never mind. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. So, one more second here. There, oh, there we go. Sorry for my snafu. <laughs> um, but the area that you see in green, um, let, me, let me first put up uh, and show not the master plan, but instead the, see that orange? That's the city of New Melly, the municipal limits. And you'll see it's at the intersection basically of Highway D and Highway Z. The area we're talking about is just north of that, just north of uh, the city of New Melly. You look here, um, you see the intersection of Highway Z and Highway D, it's the city of New Melly. Generally speaking, the master plan calls for agricultural land uses south of New Melly, and I'm, I'm uh, summarizing here, and north of New Melly, it shows rural residential land uses, that's that, uh, that beige area. And so that's the area that we're talking about. So that, that east-west band of beige is the area that in St. Charles County in our master plan, we're, we're recommending for rural residential land uses. And that the, this zoning falls in that area, and that's why we, county staff thought it, uh, complies with the future land use map plan. So, so the green is the five acre lots and the beige yeah. is the three acre lots? Right. So okay. you just you just clarified that magical line that I was talking about. <laughs> yeah. I mean it's it's the policy uh, that in this area that it would allow up to uh, you know one dwelling per acre, but practically speaking there's no sewers there, so we're talking about three acre lots. And um, and again that's a policy uh, but the County Council is not obligated to follow the master plan, but it's in, it's everyone, everyone's best interest to do so. Okay. Any questions? Uh, further questions for staff? Hearing none, the chair will entertain a motion regarding application RZ22-05, which is the rezoning request for the property located at 3866 South Point Prairie Road. Is so there moved. a... moved. Who, who did that? Who's, who's I right? did motion, but yeah, motion. You, you, you so made the motion. Okay. That's <laughs> 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 going well. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. There's a second. Uh, Mr. Cleary, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Fromm? Yes. Uh, Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Mayer? Yes. Ms. Barr? Yes. Uh, where am I? Mr. Hollander? No. Mm, no. Mr. Shell? Yes. And Mr. Cornwell? Yes. And I vote yes. This application uh, passes. Okay. Uh, now, the next thing on our agenda is uh, the preliminary plat for Saxony Ridge located at 3866 South Point Prairie Road. This is application number PRE 22-06. The property owners are the Grape and Thin Family Limited Partnership and uh, Kenneth Baker and Michelle Baker, the developers Lombardo Homes of uh, St. Louis LLC. The engineer is uh, Civil Environmental Consultants Incorporated. Proposed lots are 28. The area is 96.27 acres. The location is approximately 500 feet west of Highway Z on the north side of South Point Prairie Road near the city of New Melly. This is located in Council District 2. Staff. Okay, the proposal is assuming that the applicants receive a favorable um, approval. That, assuming that they receive approval by the County Council for the zoning, this plat is submitted for your, uh, for your review and approval of the Planning and Zoning Commission. So there's a little less than 100 acres. You'll notice that there's one really long street. It's kind of like in a backwards question mark shape. And the way I characterize that, the reason is because 
the property is bisected north to south by a water, natural water course. And so in order to avoid crossing that natural water course, um, which is preferable um, for environmental reasons and also erosion and, and stormwater reasons, they're going far, way far north and then circling back around. So normally that's not uh, a great design uh, for a couple reasons. And one of those is because you can't really turn around without driving a mile if you're a larger vehicle. But in this case, they've solved that problem by providing these uh, eyebrow, um, kind of like half cul-de-sacs along the way where, where trucks and other vehicles can turn around. So that helps uh, provide some relief for that. Uh, let's see what else. There's proposed um, public water supply and, and fire hydrants. We dis did receive the letter from the Fire Protection District, New Melly Fire Protection District. I'll note one thing. Under the, the Fire Protection Code, it requires normally 26-foot uh, wide streets, but that's really in cities. 26 feet wide, that's like 13-foot travel lanes. That's, that's wider than on an interstate. Interstate, it's only 12-foot wide lanes. And so normally the Fire Code asks for 13-foot wide lanes which is, I think, is person's excessive. The way to address that, though, is if they, if they sign no parking along the street, then you can do 20-foot wide streets under the International Fire Code. That's my understanding. So I know this is a detail, but uh, in order to meet the International Fire Code, my understanding is that ultimately the street will have to be signed no parking along the way. And that's... That's easy to do because the lots are three acres and you can easily accommodate any kind of parking demand. It's not like uh, a built up neighborhood where, where homes don't have any on site parking. So um, that should be no problem. Is that like overnight parking or is that uh, like if you had a birthday party and you've got 50 people there, nobody can park? It really should be no parking whatsoever. No, no. I mean, if you're having a birthday party, in your yard. <laughs> yeah, they should park on site, you know, okay. if they're having a birthday party. Um, let's see, you know, we, we got the report back from the Soil and Water Conservation Service. They rate 100% of the site has very limited for septic tank absorption fields. Having said that, there are ways to over address that or overcome that. They just have to <coughs> design the systems within that limitation. So that's not um, anything too unusual. So county staff. Um, finds that the proposed plant meets the techni requ technical requirements of the subdivision regulations. Any questions for staff? Eric Nimmel, ask the applicant to come forward. We have to do this again, Doug. It's a different application. Absolutely. You saw me swear or affirm that you'll tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings or in the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Please state your name and address for the record. My name's Doug Tiemann. I'm an engineer with CEC. My address is 3000 Little Hills Expressway, St. Charles, Missouri, 63301. Okay, go ahead. Um, I will step back just to show the proposed uh, preliminary plat. Uh, we've already discussed that. Uh, it'll consist of uh, 28 lots and we are saying that um, all the lots will have the setbacks the 50 foot front setback so uh, driveways are going to be at least 50 feet long that and probably much longer in, in most cases um, so I don't to address the parking I don't believe that will be any problem um, as we said before uh, we do have water service and uh, the design was intentional to preserve as much of the site as we can. And I'll be happy to answer any other questions. Okay, questions for the applicant. Are the eyebrows big enough for buses to turn, fire trucks to turn, those types of things if they had to turn in the subdivision? The, when, if, if you, I don't know if you can see it very well. Um, I don't know if that, no, no, oh, then. Do I have a pointer? This is, this is one of the eyebrows that we were talking yeah. about mm -hmm. are that, that are pushed out to 40 foot, 42 foot radiuses. We also have another one located at the end 
we have a third one located at this point, and then we have a enlarged cul-de-sac at this point that's a 110 foot diameter that would allow for turning. So that is how we address that, and that's how the fire district looked at and said, we don't have to uh, drive all the way down to the end and turn around. They would be able to do that at several points. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? I guess just seeing the like the creek through there, that's where the water runoff will be into the creek. Yeah. It, it would be. The, yeah. uh, as mentioned, this is this is the creek that kind of yeah. the yeah, stream I see that, that runs. I see that now. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions? Hearing none. Thanks, sir. We will now open the public hearing for PRE 22-06, which is a preliminary plat for Saxony Ridge, located at 3866 South Point Prairie Road. Anyone wishing to speak regarding this application? You saw me swear our affirmative will tell the truth, the whole truth, or nothing but the truth in these proceedings are the pains and penalties of perjury. Yes, I do. Please state your name and address for the record. Thank you very much, members of the commission. My name is Arnie C. A.C. Dinoff, County Public Advocate. Just a few things. I don't want to um, uh, be too detailed here, but I want some guarantees for the adjoining property owners in the neighborhood as a whole. Um, there needs to be some guarantee, some water uh, runoff and erosion control, and I'd like to see somebody address that. Not everything goes according to plan, especially when you put in a roadway and uh, those type of things. So we wanna make sure that there's no erosion and that there's water control. And I'd like to see some type of condition placed on uh, the preliminary plat. Or preliminary, um, plat. Uh, the other thing is I'd like to see a condition that adequate water hydrants and pressure be provided by the developer. Uh, so uh, to provide the uh, homes on the site and the final condition is that the roadway be built to the county specified code and standards. Uh, those are my comments, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak regarding application PRE 22-06? Anyone? You solemnly swear or affirm that you'll tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings with the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Please state your name and address for the record. Christopher Eaker, 3836 South Point Prairie Road. Go ahead, Christopher. Uh, so I wanted to make a comment based on what the clerk said about uh, septic systems. Yes, there are ways to deal with the high clay silt loam that is on my property and obviously on the Great Pistons property, property as well, which requires treating the effluent before dripping it into the field, which is if the system fails, which they do fail, especially if you mow your lawn and you drive over these drip lines, right? They're six inches below the ground. If you hit one, all of that land, if you haven't been there, slopes down to that creek, like they said, for storm runoff, you'll be polluting all of that water, not to mention on the lower half of that screen, all of those properties <laughs> slope to my yard, right? So now I'm in conjunction with it because I'm being polluted and it's gonna flow and erode my property as well. And with no stormwater, he specifically said there's no stormwater retention in place. They're just planning on that creek, which already floods. So I have a lot of concerns with this. I appreciate Mr. Grapton. I have nothing but respect for him and I appreciate his right to sell his land to whoever he wants to do whatever he wants with but that being said i think considerations to be made for not just the people that live around it but for my adjoining property and the special systems that have to be in place for that system to work are prone to failure and so i think the risk outweighs the cost and that's all i have to say thank, thank you. you sir Anyone else wishing to speak regarding application PRE 22-06? Excuse me. Bless you. Turning to seeing no one, we will close the, the public hearing and ask the applicant to come back. I'd be happy to talk a little bit about the uh, 
stormwater and protection there, the county does have a pretty extensive <coughs> SWIP requirement. They would follow that. They are required to follow that SWIP requirement that the county has as far as land disturbance and putting up any type of silt fences and any type of, um, of precautions to keep the silt on the site. They will do that. They have to do that. The county does routine inspections on that. Um, to address some of the uh, on-site septic systems, uh, each lot is looked at. There's a soil report done on each lot. Uh, they go out and take, uh, take borings in certain areas and what they think is the most uh, adequate areas for the on-site system. Then that system is designed, it's specifically designed for the soils. <coughs> so it is designed so it meets the requirements of the soil system. And there is typically, I'll say, a system that has a uh, filtration in it before it goes out to a field and <coughs> runs out and then goes into the ground. And most of those fields are 24 to 36 or 48 inches below grade depending on the type of soil strata they hit and the system that's put in there. So each one is individually designed and they are also reviewed by the county and approved by the county. Are those required? Uh, okay, so each one is having, is, is that gonna be dictated in terms of each individual property? Or is that going to be done just a, with a sample boring? They usually go in each lot and do a sample boring where they believe that system will be located. So what I, if I understand it correctly, the septic system is almost like a self-treatment that the water will be, as it leaves there, will already be treated. It, it, as it comes out of it, it goes, into a, it goes into a box that actually does treatment and then that discharges through... They, there are several different ways you can do it, but one of the most typical ones is through a manifold of pipes that comes out, and then that manifold of pipes is below grade. Um, and then over that, it's typically put in an area that you do very minimal mowing and you let the grass grow on that type of area and keep your land disturbance down. So how far do the lentils go out from, from there? It's... Difficult to say. Um, I mean, would 50 feet be typical or 200? Yeah, or? I mean, they're designed, the way they're designed, you can design it in a, in a pattern that fits your site. So, I mean, you can, you can change the manifold so you can make it a, a short site or you can make it rectangular or you can even do some mound systems that we've even done on site. So it's fairly site specific for each one. Okay. And then the absorption of the of that effluent, is that, uh, is that anything calculated on that, like for how long of it, saturation period there is? It is. When they look at the, at the soils, we get a soils report back if we design them from borings and they will tell us what the absorption rate is for each soil type and he'll tell us that strata. Okay, and then, then and that strata is where you to. design that system to be at so that it hits that hits that strata okay. for the absorption. Okay, very good. Thank you. I would say that I, I kind of going to disagree with you a little bit. I don't I've never lived in too many places, you know, that people leave half of their yard growing wild for septic runoff. I don't think that's realistic to say that that's going to happen, especially if somebody's building a nice large home in three-acre subdivision lots for bugs, snakes, kids, ticks. This is, that's just not the reality of what's going to happen. So there is that. So I do understand their concern if the water is coming down through the subdivision and there's nowhere for it to collect, especially as there's runoff from driveways, from streets, from yards, from if people have sprinkler systems, whatever the case may be. Now, a sprinkler system is probably not going to cause a deluge to go down the middle of the creek. But if there is flooding and, and more rain off, I can't understand the need for or desire to 
see something about a retention pond or, wa or water runoff for the neighbor in good faith. And, and we can look at that and see how it is. Uh, typically, when you've got a three-acre lot and you have a house on it, you, you have a very impervious situation on that lot. Um, in, in general, that's even less impervious as a, a farm field that's tilled up and put into crops because they're growing grass or trees and and some of those areas will actually turn from where runoff was more because it was a farm field into a young, into a lawn or into a tree so it can actually reduce some of the runoff but if it's really clay does the clay really conducive i mean i i've always thought the clay was not conducive to that even with grass you know but if it's if it's a high clay area or maybe I misunderstood that you said it. I thought you said it was a high clay area. It, it, I did not say it, oh, but, okay. but um, uh, oh. it, it is very typical that there are clays in that area. But um, those are encountered. We encounter those in, in the St. biggest Charles part County. of St. Charles County. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? Hearing none, uh, thank you, sir. We will bring uh, application uh, PRE 22-06, uh, which is the preliminary plat for Saxony Ridge, located at 3866 Point Prairie Road, uh, back to the commission for consideration. Any questions for staff? Any comments? Would there be any possibility that they could add some sort of you know, since they have no storm water collection, you know, would, would that perhaps mitigate some of this concern if they added some sort of, you know, retention, water retention? Well, I, I mean, I, I'm not I, a civil engineer. I think, uh, yeah. forget his last, Chris, uh, the person that spoke, his concern was, was <laughs> his, his concern was uh, a faulty septic. System, not not stormwater runoff, but a, a faulty septic system, which then discharged into the uh, creek. Right. Yeah. And my thought was, if there was some sort of retention area that it could discharge there, in, rather than into his land. When he said water too, because he said the creek floods all the time. Yeah. Well, uh, but this is a preliminary plat, right, Robert? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. This isn't the final plat, okay. and it has to meet all the the, the uh, water quality water standards quality. we passed. Yeah. About uh, three six. Hour, at three hour. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We went to. yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. Um, both uh, water quantity standards for flooding and also water quality standards yeah. as well. And so, part of the water quality um, um, provisions is that the water course is going to have a vegetative buffer along both sides. Mm -hmm. And that's got to be maintained. It's going to be um, an easement placed on that so that it can't be disturbed. So water flowing towards the creek is going to flow across the grass or lawn or whatever the, the greenery is and then through the trees, the, the, the natural vegetation. So that, that's a pretty good filter in terms of water quality. Yeah, those things would be considered in the final plat. This is preliminary. Okay. That's the 25 feet setback you're talking about along the creek here? Uh, yeah, from the top of bank, that's my understanding, 25 feet minimum. Okay. I, just, I saw that on this deal. I just didn't know what it was. So basically, the, it sounds like there's significantly more discussion before this is finalized. And uh, many of these concerns can be brought up in, in future. And perhaps solutions can be, you know, brought to, to the table then. Yes. Any other questions, concerns? Robert, do you have anything else? No. Okay. I have one more thing. Uh, I noticed the creek does run through the back of several of these lots. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, how does that work specifically with the runoff on those lots? I mean, if it was at the very back, all of them would have essentially equal amount of drainage to it, but it's right through those. So there's, are those lots above grade flowing that way also? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. 
that's why that, that's why the road is round. Yeah, no, I get that, but I, yeah. anything else? Right, none. The chair will entertain a motion to approve PRE 22-06, which is the preliminary plat for Saxony Ridge, located at 3866 South Point Prairie Road. Is there a motion? Motion. motion. Um, Mr. Pamer, I'll give you the motion. Uh, Mr. Cornwell, I'll give you the second. Okay. Of course. Mr. Fromm, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Mr. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Chell? Yes. Uh, Mr. Cleary? Yes. Uh, Mr. Hollander? Yes. Uh, Ms. Barr? Yes. Ms. Bamer? Yes. Mr. Cornwell? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay. Now if I can find my place. How do you pronounce that? You're right. Next item on our agenda is application PRE 22 04, uh, which is a preliminary plat for Wayside Meadows uh, Plat 3 at 98 Abbey Kate Lane. The property owner is Justin Herat. Did I get that correct? Is that, is that correct? Perfect. And uh, Jeanette Herat. The engineer is Cochrane Engineering. The proposed lots are two. The area is 18.58 acres. The location is approximately 3,150 feet north of the intersection of Abbey Kate Lane and uh, Dunkey Road near the city, uh, city of Wentzville. Um, this is located in Council District 1. Staff. The, the subject property is almost 19 acres and they're dividing into two lots and each lot are going to be way more than five acres in area. So normally they could go through a minor subdivision plat process with just county staff. They wouldn't have to go to the Planning Zoning Commission. The difference here is that this 19-acre parcel is already in a subdivision. This is a really atypical subdivision lot. It's 19 acres. So they're proposing to subdivide 19 acres into two parcels. And so uh, in order to do that, they have to have a subdivision plat. Now, because the, the parcel... If, um, if you could put up the image from my, on my screen, please. Uh, thank you. The parcel is outlined in, in um, yellow here, and you'll see on the north that fronts on a street, so it's a really long and narrow lot. Well, the lot is bisected in the middle by a natural water course, and they're proposing to divide the parcel into from one to two lots. Um, because it's so long and narrow and this natural water course, it does make sense to divide the, uh, the parcel with the northern portion and the southern portion, but that would mean that the southern uh, lot would not front on any street. Mm -hmm. Our subdivision regulations require that all parcels front on a street. Uh, to not front on a street, it requires that you grant special approval, and you can do so along with your uh, plat approval but I would just ask that you do so explicitly. You say that, for instance, if you, if you would choose to prove this plat, you would say so uh, with uh, a waiver allowing a parcel not to front on a public street. <coughs> so how they're proposing access to that southern portion of the lot, let me uh, hopefully have a <laughs> depiction here of the Helicopter. southern portion. No, no. Come on. It's and my screen's frozen. Here we go. It says zip lining. Yeah. Parachute in. Ah, sorry, the screen's freezing up here. That's the zip line. You need a car if your zip line is here. I hit it and it just everything went away. Well, I'm sorry, my screen's frozen up, but yeah, Eric is doing the same. Thing. Yeah, I have this. I have it one printed off. You want to look at it? Okay. We, wow, we that's huge. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. But the proposal yeah, is to uh, take access for the yeah. southern parcel yeah. by uh, an access easement from the west. This portion right here. This would be the easement. Uh, this portion here, this 20 foot. 
So it comes off Abbey Kate Lane. That's correct. And then that splits it and you go this way and this way to lots? Uh, no. No, this no, one's centered from Abbey up Kate there. Lane up yeah. top. Oh, okay. From the, like a regular. Okay. Um, this one comes from a piece of property that I already own over here. Oh. Okay. That there's none in here. Okay. Okay, now, is, there, is that going to be an easement? Hold up, we'll ask. We'll, okay. We'll, we'll get okay. 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 Yeah, 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 just any other, any other questions of the staff? Any other questions of staff? Oh, damn. You want to see it? I saw it. I just want to know. Okay, any other questions for staff? Uh, we'll ask the uh, applicant to uh, come forward. You solemnly swear or affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and these proceedings are the pains and penalties of perjury. Yes, sir. Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Justin Herite. My address is 30 Abbey Kate, uh, Forest Hill, Missouri, 63348. Okay, go ahead, Justin. Um, do you, you want this back? So you I don't, if you need it, if you need to look at it. I have a small Oh, okay. Well, he wants here. Come here, Mr. Clario wants here. He needs big pictures. He can't read words. I'm on your list. I can see that. So it, it's it's a large piece of property. The the back portion of the property is there's it's trashy. I don't I don't know. It has no value. So um, I do want to just split the two. I want one to enter from my backside and the other one. It would have been a lot easier, I guess, in other ways. For as long as that took to load, it took me to get to this process. Um, but it, I don't so you know. Live that's obviously uh, Abby Katie. That's correct. Lane. Mm -hmm. That's your house right there. That's correct. And so you're just going to use that back piece of property for what? Just to hunt, or I mean, no, no, no. Um, lots. I don't, you know, but, he said it's trash. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> he just called it. I mean, it's not. Put it this way: you you can't even get to it through the front portion. Right. So uh, to make to be amenable to the neighbors around there, I said instead of me putting in a road, you know, a twenty foot road down the side of someone's property, you let me split and don't say anything. You know, don't contest, and I won't put two. Or I mean, because realistically, I could put three lots away. on here, right? I mean, I would be so well within your thing. Drive off. Your, through your property to that. I'm accident. not ever going to do that. Oh. I, 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 I could have put three lots there. I don't want any, anyone to live behind my house. Okay. So my friend that lived on the street had someone put a house right next to his house. I'm not, I, don't, I bought the property just so somebody can't put a house behind my house. Okay. I mean, that's the truth. So. And you're splitting it so that somebody can put a house. Put yeah, so I could, I, that top. I don't even see top. over there. But yeah. then that they can't use the bottom portion. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. But he gets to keep it. So you're kind of just... You're really wanting, except you don't need to attach it, but you're kind of attaching that portion to the exactly. Line. I'm just pur All purchasing a buffer so no one can touch me. Makes sense in the back. That's a way to do it. Okay. Any questions for the applicant? Do you okay. have to go through some kind of subdivision approval besides this? Mm, no, they just agreed to. I mean, the the president just agreed to it. I made. We, I don't know how you say that. Do you? I mean, are the covenants. The covenants. Required? They're not restricted for anything like this. I could do three. They're so old-fashioned that I. Um, we're friends. I talked to him today. Well, He's agreeable uh, to it. Well, that's good enough. I, for my me. property. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds legal. Are, uh, do, do you have uh, Do you have a homeowners association? Oh, good, good. I do not. My piece that I currently reside on is not in the subdivision. This piece is. At some point, we're going to vacate my, the back 10 out of the subdivision because it doesn't have any access, and that's kind of the plan. That makes sense. Uh, but that has to happen all at a later date that, that I, don't, I don't know how, you know. Okay. That's not really a concern at this Zero condition, concern, but it yes. could be issues down the road. Okay. And I specifically made it eight so someone couldn't split. I, I didn't do 10 up front, so they can't have two houses up front because they could have yeah. done one drive. They could have done the same thing. So I didn't want two houses up front. I said, I want to choose my neighbor pretty much. <laughs> okay. Any other questions for the applicant? Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. We'll now open the public hearing for PRE 22-04. You saw me swear or affirm that you'll tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings are the pains and penalties of perjury. Yes, I do. Please state your name and address for the record. Yes, my name is uh, Arnie C. A. C. Dinoff, County Public Advocate, mailing address PO Box 1535, O'Fallon. And I just have uh, seven simple words. 
Uh, this is responsible development. I would encourage the approval with the variance. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak regarding uh, application PRE 22-04? Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing, bring this back to <coughs> the commission for consideration. Okay, now, in the, in the motion, we have to include it would be helpful to explicitly state that uh, the Planning Zoning Commission is granting a waiver to allow a parcel to not front on a public street. Yeah. Okay. And that's, that's allowable under section 410.480.D of the county code for the record, if anyone asks. Or okay. should, I, should, I make, should I make a motion to add that then? Uh, if you want to make that part of the motion. It's part of the original motion. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So the chair will entertain a motion to uh, approve application PRE 22-07. And uh, the motion includes that the Planning and Zoning Commission grants a waiver uh, to a piece of par to a parcel of property that does not have access to a public street. Is that? Yeah, we're not, where the lot would not front on a public street. Yeah, where a lot would not front on a public street. Motion. Okay. Second. Is there a second? Second. Oh, Mr. Jackson. I know. I'm going to for the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ms. Barr, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Mr. Clary? Yes. Mr. Cornwall? Yes. Uh, Ms. Bamer? Yes. Uh, Mr. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Hollander? Yes. Mr. Shell? Yes. Mr. Fromm? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay. Here you go. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Do you want to keep that? Or? No. <laughs> no, you can. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you too. Okay, now where are we at? Summers Road. Last Summers week. Road. Yeah. A final thing on the agenda is a uh, preliminary plat for uh, Summer Oaks at 2366 Summers Road. Application PRE 22-05. The property own owner is Daniel... Kern and Jacqueline Kern, the engineers Bax Engineering, proposed lots are three. Uh, the area is 1.920 acres. Location is on the northeast corner of the intersection of Somers Road and Oak Drive near the cities of O'Fallon, Lake St. Louis, and Darden Prairie, located in Council District 2. Staff. The zoning, the R1B zoning for this property was approved by the County Council in 2021. And so the applicants, the property owners, have come back to subdivide the, this lot into three. There's no proposed public improvements. The street's already there, both Summers Road and uh, the, um, the side street. Um, Oak. Oak Drive. I'm sorry. I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> uh, so again, there's no um, public improvements necessary. Uh, because this parcel is less than three acres, typically the natural water course and floodplain is put into common ground that's managed by a homeowners association. But in this case, there's only three lots. So it's a little cumbersome to require a homeowners association to be formed and to own the, the natural water course and to manage the natural water course when there's only three parcels involved. Um, so in, in this case, rather than doing that, setting aside the natural water course behind the home as common ground, they're proposing just to put an easement on it that will protect it. Um, and that easement would be a deed restriction for future property owners. Now, in order, in order to do that, that would require county council approval of a variance from the subdivision regulations. So what they're asking for tonight is for your consideration and for uh, recommendation for approval to the county council. And so it'd have to go to the county council be approved in the form of an ordinance with the granting of a variance to allow the natural water course to be on an easement rather than own a common ground. Okay, so the the county council would grant the variance. Right. Okay. Any uh, questions for staff? Hearing none, we we'll ask the applicant to come forward. You solemnly swear our affirmance will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings with the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Please state your name and address for the record. Thank you. Jeff Simmons with Bax Engineering, 221 Point West Boulevard, St. Charles. 
Go ahead, Jeff. Um, Mr. Myers did a great job uh, explaining what we are asking for. Um, I would just say that uh, as in relation to the natural water course, um, this really is very similar to what you allow on three acre lots. Um, three acre lots do not require that the uh, homeowner, that a homeowners association control the, um, the water course buffer. Um, so we're just asking for this on a smaller scale, assuming that uh, the council would uh, grant us this waiver. Any questions for the applicant? Seeing none, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, we will now open a public hearing for uh, PRE 22-05, which is, which is a preliminary plat for Somer Oaks, located at 2366 Somers Road. You saw me swear or affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings or in the pains and penalties of perjury. Yes. Please state your name and address for the record. Thank you very much, members of the commission. My name is Ronnie C. A.C. Dinoff, County uh, Public Advocate, mailing address P.O. Box 1535, O'Fallon, 63366. Again, um, as you all know, this is one of the highest growth areas of our county. Uh, this area is exploding in terms of population growth. Uh, this is responsible development. If you look at the adjoining municipalities, especially O'Fallon, could have been a lot denser, could have been um, up to 10 units uh, per acre. And so I applaud the uh, uh, proponent and the applicant for keeping it to, to three homes for the size of the lot that's just under two acres. And I ask for unanimous, unanimous approval. Anyone else wishing to speak regarding uh, application PRE 22-05? We'll close the public hearing. And does anybody have any questions for the applicant? Seeing no questions for the applicant, we'll bring uh, this application back to the uh, commission for consideration. Motion to approve PRE -E 2205. Motion by Mr. Fromm. Is there a second? Second. And Ms. Barr made the second. Uh, Ms. Bamer, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Clary? Yes. Mr. Cornwell? Yes. Mr. Fromm? Yes. Mr. Shell? Yes. Uh, Mr. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Barr? Yes. Mr. Hollander? Yes. And I vote yes. That passes. Okay, let's see here. Minutes. Uh, we have no continued items. The next thing on our agenda is approval of the minutes from the March 16th, 2022 meeting. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. A uh, motion has been made and seconded to approve the minutes of the March 16th, 2022 meeting. All those in favor, sign aye. 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 Are there any planning and zoning division updates? Um, I wanted to mention one thing. At a, at a previous meeting, we talked about how to address uh, comments from agencies with plats. And uh, Mr. Jackson suggested uh, maybe we just put that, that mailing matrix in the packet so that's what we're that's what we're doing uh, so if you look in the, the plat packets it'll include a, a matrix and what all the the jurisdictions are and who we mailed letters to and that may help you with in that regard I noticed that I thought it looked really good at, le at least it's something I mean uh, again it's like we're, we've started a few years ago we started or more recently than that we started putting in the map showing what parts our properties were actually notified and that at least clue you into what who was notified but we're not actually putting every single letter in the packet it's just when you yeah. put all of the letters in the packet yeah. of you know everyone you sent the letters to it becomes so burdensome or the the, the packet itself it's hard to navigate it doesn't mean that they haven't that they will respond but yeah. it's just a notification that they have been informed of right. the potential um, action that's going to be taken in the Right. Area. Sometimes they respond, sometimes they don't. School districts typically don't respond. Sometimes they'll say that they want a uh, cul-de-sac turnaround to be larger uh, if they want school buses to serve that subdivision. Otherwise, the kid's going to have to walk down to the entrance of the subdivision and wait there for the school bus. So we'll get comments like that from school districts. Yeah. Any other questions for Mr. Meyer? Seeing none, Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, sign aye. Aye. aye.
Thank you. Thank you.